Hi everyone, I'm Alistair Venn and you're watching Expressive Photography. In this week's video, I want to cover one of the things about digital photography that makes it so incredible and why we can get so much more out of our time in the field than we ever could before. Now, back in the day when some of us photographed with one of these, this is my Hasselblad 501CM, um, and we would look through the viewfinder and try and get an estimation of what it is that we were going to be photographing in the field. Um, this one actually has a reverse mirror so that what you see is the uh, a mirror version of what is actually in front of you, which makes it confusing when you're trying to rotate it. But depending on the film that I used to load in the back, and this is actually uh, loaded with black and white film, there was a huge amount of uh, thought, planning, experience went into actually getting a fair idea of what you were going to get when you got your prints back or when you started developing them yourself. This is why there were so few people really out there photographing at a very high level. The cost of learning all of that incredible in-depth stuff that you needed to know to get your exposures right and to get an understanding of the tonal range if indeed you were shooting black and white film uh, using different color filters etc there was a, a massive amount of learning and time necessary to get you up to speed uh, nowadays with one of these and this is my nikon d850 uh, we have the opportunity to see live on the back of our preview screens uh, what we are likely to be capturing, in particular the exposure, the impact of time. We can see a preview right away. And that is obviously a massive shift in the cost of entry, the amount of time necessary to understand what you're going to get when you push the shutter. Film is expensive, processing is expensive. It used to get, you know, maybe one or two frames out of a roll of film that were really good. These days, you get people in workshops expecting five, six, seven, ten great shots a day. Uh, so it's a very, very different situation from how it was before. Anyone who has seen any of my videos and in my Lightroom catalog realizes two things. One is that I um, shoot. Uh, I crop in camera an awful lot of the time. Uh, squares, 4x5s, 16x9s are three common aspect ratios that I will shoot in camera. And the second thing is black and white previews. Uh, I shoot with a black and white preview at least half the time. And the reason I do that is because it allows me to have an experience in the landscape that gives me better feedback than if I had a color preview. So in this week's video, I want to talk about the power of the black and white preview in your camera. Before we dive into that, there's just a couple of announcements I have to make. You know that Adam Gibbs and I are running a few workshops together, first of all, in May this year in uh, Vancouver Island in British Columbia. Uh, and there's a few spots left on the first one of those dates. Uh, that's going to be based up in Port Renfrew. Of course, there's the fairy tree and some of the beautiful trails along there. So we're really looking forward to meeting some of you guys uh, in Vancouver Island in May. But there are a few spots left. Click on the link link underneath this uh, video to get taken to our workshop page for registration. Uh, secondly, Adam and I are also going to be back in the north coast of Spain in January and we still have a few spots on a couple of those trips as well. So if you're interested in joining myself and Adam Gibbs for an incredible time in the landscape and to learn from both of us, then check out those two workshops. So why would you use a black and white preview when it's got perfectly good color previews? Well, first of all, your camera may not have a black and white preview. And if that is the case, then I'm sorry, but uh, uh, many cameras do. My uh, Nikon D850, which is looking very much beaten up these days, uh, does have a black and white preview. And I'm going to tell you why I use it. If we look at some of the photographs here uh, taken on the screen, the ones that are black and white previews, most of them were taken uh, around 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock during the day uh, when the light was a little bit more harsh, a little bit more blue. Um, and what I've wanted to do here is 
give myself feedback that makes me feel as if the thing I'm doing in the field is great. <laughs> That's a, a slightly arrogant expression there. I love black and white photography. My first really meaningful ebook that I published a few years ago was Luminosity and Contrast. And I delved into black and white photography in a way where I understand the concept of luminosity and contrast, the power of luminosity in a landscape. As soon as we remove color, we're having to deal with the, with the images in a very different way. If I pop this into the develop module, you can see it's got that kind of slightly bluish and then there's a kind of muddy brownness in the rocks there. Now it's a perfectly acceptable preview, um, but jumping back into the develop mod, uh, the uh, library mode there, I prefer it in black and white. If I'm making photographs where the color is super important, it can be very good to go into black and white preview just to get rid of the color because it allows you to see the composition for what it is. A good example of that is this photograph here. This I actually photographed in color um, because I was just loving this reflected light hitting the top of the, the waves there, um, the river. And seeing those colors on the back of the camera made me feel good about the experience I was having. However, I'm not 100% about this composition, the big foam on the top right hand side there. And I believe that if I had shot this in black and white, I might have had a different relationship with it. Having said that, <laughs> it's not bad. This is another example where I shot this in color because it was this cool to warm and the green of the rocks, the relationship, the color was important. This again was a photograph taken at uh, about 11.30 in the morning, so a lot of blue light in the sky there. And this little patch of warmth was just reflecting off a mountain in the background, um, which was in full sun. So the color combinations were what I was really responding to and I found it really fascinating. Again though, I do believe that in black and white, the composition still works. So I, I don't feel as if I lost something here by not photographing in black and white. The black and white preview on the back of your camera allows you to shoot in circumstances where the colors are going to take away something from perhaps the experience that you're having. Uh, as soon as we see black and white on the back of a camera, we instantly start thinking of fine art. We start thinking of beautiful square prints uh, hanging on the wall. Uh, this one, for example, I really, really like. And this is an unprocessed file, but as soon as I go into color, now the tones are perfectly acceptable. There's nothing horribly wrong with that in any shape or form, but I think I always thought of the photograph as black and white and perhaps seeing that high contrast black and white on the back of the camera engaged me more with the scene than if I'd seen this on the back of the camera. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with changing your mind. You can shoot with a black and white preview to get that sense of fine art when you're looking at the back of your camera, particularly if the light is very very blue or the colors are uh, like muddy colored rocks or sand in particular, all of those things can look a little bit blah um, on the back of a camera in a color preview. But there's no reason why you can't change your mind. And if you want to process the resultant file in color, that's perfectly fine. There's no reason why you shouldn't. But likewise, if you go into black and white, then obviously you can start uh, adjusting some of these tones to make perhaps a high, a more high contrast version. And there we go. We see something there that is, it's not just sand and surf anymore. It seems to be greater than the sum of its parts. The black and white preview mode, I really do believe is one of the most powerful tools that we actually have in our digital cameras these days. The power to see something on the back of your camera that makes you feel good about the, the subject that you're engaging with and the, the way you're uh, harvesting the light, the way you're recording the scene. Uh, using the preview to, to look at the shutter speed to assess those things in conjunction with this uh, black and white preview, I, I feel I was making photographs that 
were giving me really positive feedback about the experience. Anything that we can do in the field to make ourselves feel better about the things that we're pointing our cameras at and the images that all we're making at the time are going to make the experience better. I really struggle these days with anybody that's telling you to do things that are going to confine you more, that are going to make you feel as if you have to pre-visualize the final photograph somehow at the same time as you're in the field trying to find compositions. The time we have in the landscape should be precious. It should be filled with enjoyment. It should be filled with the pleasure of discovery. Most of these photographs that I'm showing you now were just little moments where we're walking along the coast and it was just like, that's cool, I love that. So in this one here, this jagged uh, foreground rocks were juxtaposed really nicely against this very atmospheric area where the surf was piling in and then pouring down this slope. The fact that I uh, was shooting in a black and white preview made it just feel very artistic to me. Um, if I jump into the develop module, we start introducing these cool tones and the rocks themselves seem a little bit more ordinary to me. I, I definitely have a stronger sense that what I was seeing on the back of the camera with the black and white preview was giving me a much more positive um, feedback from the experience and from the type of photographs that I was making. I believe very strongly that expressive photography is about you finding ways to make everything you do with your camera and in front of the, uh, in front of the computer better. You know, we want you to be having a good time. We want you to be enjoying yourself. We want you to be feeling as if the time you're spending in the field is time well spent. Likewise, in front of the computer. You know, popping this image back into black and white, I instantly feel um, a deeper sense of connection with it than with the colour. When I wrote Luminosity in Contrast back in 2018, the reason I wrote it was to make a photographic book about black and white photography, to try and teach black and white photography. But I didn't want to just recreate all the books that had been done before, covering the topic in exactly the same way as hundreds of other people had done before. I wanted to produce a book that allows the reader to find the relationship that they have with luminosity and contrast. In this photograph here, luminosity is the brightness of that surf. We notice this very high energy area in the back of the frame. The contrast with the jagged, uh, much more angular foreground rocks allow us to have differences, a transition from light, airy, but still quite energetic through to this very rugged and static foreground. The black and white cuts through any colour that may be present in the scene because colour is such a powerfully um, manipulative uh, ingredient, which is why my second ebook, The Colour of Meaning, looks at the impact of colour because we can see here how quickly these photographs can get out of hand, they get oversaturated. Blue light saturates very, very quickly and we have to be very careful with how we deal with blue light. But the blueness of this scene, or if we somewhat neutralize it, things just seem to get a bit flat and a bit boring. So for me, this is a black and white photograph and having the camera in black and white preview mode allowed me to see this much quicker and much faster in the field and get that positive feedback. Uh, hopefully you own a camera that does have a black and white preview mode. Um, if you don't, then why not import your photographs and see what they look like in black and white? You know, there's nothing to stop you just clicking that black and white preview button and seeing something that may change your relationship with the content. This photograph for me at the time was all about color, but when I see it in black and white, I change my relationship with it. You start seeing things in it that you don't see when you're absolutely being uh, overpowered with the color in a photograph. I hope you find this content useful. Expressive Photography Channel is all about trying to improve your relationship with yourself and your photography. Um, last week's discussion on the rule of thirds prompted some interesting feedback. Um, and of course, many of you are going to disagree with some of the stuff I say, and that's totally your prerogative and you can listen to whoever you want. 
At Expressive Photography, we are trying to question a lot of these rules and things that have become cast in stone. Uh, and if you are interested in digging deeper into expressive photography, please check out the ebooks Luminosity Contrast, The Color of Meaning, and uh, Creativity Superpowers. You may also consider jumping onto the Expressive Photography Forum where you can have a 30 day free trial of this subscription forum uh, where we are posting videos and talking about images and doing deep dives uh, into the art of creativity. Tune in next week when I'm going to be talking about some of the other incredibly powerful things that we can do with our cameras and hopefully that will also improve your relationship with your own art and craft. Thank you very much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up and of course dive into the bottom links there to go and check out if you can come and join Adam and myself either in Vancouver Island or the north coast of Spain. Until next week, Thank you very much for watching. I'm Alistair Benn and this is Expressive Photography. <laughs>